Okay, girls, so we're going to start a new topic starting probability today. Um, we won't go through two exercises because you'll find most of the exercises in probability is basically a review of what you've done in year 9 and 10. Um, there are a couple of new symbols that you need to be familiar with from now on though, and which I've written up here. So let's have a look. So to start off with, let's just get straight into the question. It says in question 1b, write the sample space in set notation for each chance situation. Question 1b, rating a radio station between 1 and 5. So when it says write the sample set as a set notation, if it says set notation, you need to write these brackets to start off with, okay? And then what you all, all you need to do now is write all the numbers or the elements within question 1b. So it says rating a radio station between 1 and 5. So all you need to do is write the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, Five inside that bracket. Okay, so that's what you call your set notation with all the um, outcomes. Now, with question 2a, it says for each pair of sets, find for question part i, x um, intersect y, and part i, i, find x union y. So, what that basically means, let's have a look at question 2a. So, for x, these are the elements or the numbers for x. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And for y, I have... If they want you to write all the numbers where x is intersected with y, here's the notes. It just means write all the numbers that are common to both x and y. So as we can see from these numbers here, the numbers that are common to both x and y are 2 and 4. Those are the only common elements. So all we need to do is just write those numbers inside the bracket. Oops, 2 and 4. Okay, that's all it is. For the second part, if it says find or write all the numbers, x union y, that's what it means. It means write all the numbers in x or y. Okay, so let's write them out. So all the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's the numbers you need to write inside the bracket, okay? Just write the numbers once, you don't write the numbers twice, okay? That's all it means. Now, what you also got to be able to do though, is you need to be able to draw a Venn diagram for X and Y, okay? So let's have a look at question 6B, okay? It says draw a Venn diagram for each pair of sets. So for question 6b, we've got A, which has these numbers, 3, 5, and 9. Alright, so in order to draw a Venn diagram for these two, you need to start by drawing two circles, okay? And your first step is to always write the numbers that are common to both A and B, okay? The two numbers that are common to A and B, as we can see, uh, is 5 and um, that's it. There's no other common numbers between these two. So that's the number that you write in here in between the two circles. All right. Now for this side of the circle, let's call let A for these numbers. You just have to write all other numbers for A besides 5. So that's 3, 6 and 8. So 3, 6 and 8. And for B, um, 4, 7 and 9. Okay. Now, I'm not done yet. If you read the question further, it says even A has those numbers, even B has those numbers, with cards each with a number from 1 to 10, okay, drawn out of a hat. What you would have noticed is if it says all the numbers from 1 to 10, I'm going to make sure we have all the numbers between 1 to 10. Do I have all the numbers between 1 to 10 in these elements? You'll find that no, we don't. So. The numbers that we don't have here, that is not in 1 to 10, is firstly the number 1, because we don't have number 1. Let me get rid of this. Do we have number 2? It's not here either, so write number 2 outside. We have 3, we have 4, we have 5, we have 6, 7, and 8, 9, but we also don't have the number 10. So any numbers that are not in the elements, but is in the question, you have to write it outside of the circles. Okay? Um, there are some situations where you won't need to write the numbers outside of the circles, okay? But um, you just need to keep that in mind. 
All right, so for example, if I want to draw a Venn diagram for X and Y, so for these elements, let's just quickly do it. Let's just draw two circles. Firstly, again, start with a number common between these two numbers. So the numbers common between these two numbers we've established is two and four. So write two and four in between the two circles and write all other numbers for X and Y. So for X, I have the numbers one, three, and five to fill up with because we already have two and four. One, three, and five. And for Y, we only need to write the number six because we already wrote two and four here. So it's just the number six in here. There's no other numbers that are outside of these circles because it doesn't specify anything else in the question, okay? So it all depends on the context of the question. So just read the question carefully. Okay, so girls, that's the first exercise. Um, like I said, we are going to go through two exercises because the next exercise is pretty simple as well. It's basically revision of what we did last year. Have a look at example five. So the table shows the number of items bought by a group of people surveyed in a shopping center. So as you can see, the number of items. So um, six people, so the number under the frequency, six people bought zero items. Um, four people bought one item and so on, okay? So for question 5a, it says find the relative frequency for each number of items as a fraction. So all they want you to write are those frequencies as a fraction. For the, so as a fraction, people who bought zero items, that would be six out of the total frequency. If you add up all the numbers under the frequency, so six plus four plus five plus three plus seven, you'll get 25. So that's all they want you to write as a relative frequency, and that's what it is. And obviously, if you can simplify the fraction, do so, um, but you can't. So basically, that's all you need to do for all the numbers. So one item, um, that would be four out of 25. And let me just go on. You got five out of 25 for the next one. Three items is three out of 25. And four items is seven out of 25. Okay, that's all it is for, it is for question A. Now for question example 5B, let's have a look at it quickly here. It says, find the probability that a person surveyed at random would buy no items. So that just basically means what's the probability of zero items. And using the frequency table, we've established it's six out of 25 and that's all it is. Okay, it's just using the table. Part I. Part II, probability that a person um, bought at least three items. That means as a symbol, it's probability of at least three items. So this is a symbol or type of symbol that you, I want you to be familiar with. So this means at least three or equal to three. So add all the frequency numbers for three and four. So that would be three plus seven, which is 10 out of 25, which is um, two out of five, okay? So that's really all it is for the first two exercises that you gotta do, okay? It's just a couple of new symbols and definitions, but besides that, you've learned all these concepts last year, so you should be able to do these questions, okay? Um, I'll write down the exact questions that I want you to do on Google Classroom, but that should get you through basically the two exercises, okay? Thanks, girls.